there, everyone, and welcome to STEM Inspiration Week, brought to you by STEM Point East. Um, really happy today that we're doing uh, maths on Friday. And um, just to let you know, this session is being recorded. Um, we're using the chat function today. So if you've got any questions, then do pop them in the chat function. Please leave your camera and mic switched off. Um, that's so that we don't get background noise. Um, so uh, we'll everything you can put in the chat function, any questions, and we'll come back to that at various points during this session. So firstly, I'd like to welcome Dr. Leanne Gunn, who's from the public engagement team at North Hampstead Research. Thanks, Helen. Um, yes, so I'm here from Rotham said research along with Kirsty, who will be talking to you in just a moment. And, and as Helen said, my role at Rotham said isn't one of the scientists, but I do our public engagement, which means that I try to help our scientists talk to people like you about their work um, in order to inspire people to think about careers in, in STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering and maths. So today we're here with much more of a maths focus on the work that we do. But I think it's important to know a little bit about who we are first. Um, so Rotham said is an agricultural research institute um, and I want you to have a little bit of a think for a few minutes about what that might be, what, what might agricultural science actually involve, because um, it's a bit of an odd one, you don't study that at school, but where does it fall into your science um, and lessons? So I'm going to get my screen up while you're having a, a bit of a think on that. Okay. So hopefully you can see my screen now. And um, oh, okay. So, so this is our site here in it's in Harpenden. So this is where most of our buildings are. And you might be able to see we've got lots of buildings. We've got glass houses up in one corner. And um, we've got lots of labs and offices. And then all around this, we've also got fields. Um, and one of our benefits of Rotham said is because we do agricultural science, which you might have worked out is a lot about farming. Um, it's really useful to us to have fields. We can do experiments in real fields where we grow plants and see what happens and test different things like you do in your science labs at school, but actually in the fields. And we also do stuff in our labs and also in these glass houses. These are buildings where we can control what goes on. So we can control the temperature or the lighting and actually change things and actually look at what happens. Um, now, we've been going for many, many years, and um, we've got 175 years of history about our science, so I think it's worth just saying a few words about that. Um, Rotham said started by John Laws in 1834, and he um, took over the Rotham said estate and the manor house, and then turned one of the bedrooms into a chemistry lab. Now, he didn't have a chemistry background, he just decided he wanted to do some investigations into um, how to help wheat grow more. So he started experimenting with animal bones and sulfuric acid to make fertilizers. Um, and he then teamed up in 1843 with Joseph Henry Gilbert and they worked together. He had a chemistry background, so now they had some science behind them and they worked together to set up some experiments. Um, and a lot of these experiments have been really valuable to us. And one of them is this picture on the end here, this big field, it's called Broadbalk and it's one of our oldest field experiments and it's still going today. And what they were able to do was actually turn these little investigations into proper experiments that we can actually use that science for. Now, today's a maths talk. So um, it's important to note the maths that's gone on here. Rotham said it's got a really big history of working with some really important mathematicians. And, um, and that means that our experiments are robust and repeatable, things that you'll probably learn in science about repeating experiments. There's a lot of maths that goes on around that design, and I'm sure Kirsty will give a little bit more information about the kind of maths that she does at Rothenden and the statistics in particular that she does and how that supports our science. Um, and I'll just put a few pictures up here to say a bit more about why we do our work. Um, we've got a lot of scientists on site. I think we've got around 400 members of staff working at Rothamsted at the moment across multiple sites, one in Harpenden, our main one near St Albans, but another one down in Devon. And the big picture then that we're trying to answer is how can we feed the world without harming the environment? So a really important question there. Um, and each of our scientists are chipping away at this and they might not think they're answering this really big important question, but all of their work feeds in. And people who can do the, the maths behind it, the really important maths, like Kirsty are really valuable in actually doing this, doing this work. 
So I'm going to stop there and pass over to Kirsty so she can tell you a bit more. Now, we were going to also have Helen today, but Helen can't make it. So Kirsty's going to do two presentations. She'll do the first one, then we'll have a stop for some questions, and then we'll do the other presentation after. But Kirsty's going to do both parts for us. So I'll stop. Um. Okay, so hopefully you can see my slides. Okay, so as Leanne said, I'm a statistician at Rothamsted Research. And what I want to do today is to talk a little bit about what it is that I do day to day, but also about how and why I got to where I am now. So the title of my talk is Using Maths to Unravel Scientific Secrets. And to me, this has got particular relevance because although I've always liked mathematics, it's never always been clear to me of where I can apply that math and it's that application that really motivates me to do what it is that I do. So the path to where I am now is definitely not the most exciting tale and it's by no means the only route of getting to where, to where I am. So even though it's quite a traditional path of going from school, A-levels, university, more university, and then on to being a statistician, it definitely doesn't mean I had any clue about what it was that I wanted to do when I was at school. So at school, I always enjoyed uh, maths. Um, it was one of my favorite subjects. But as I said, it was never clear to me how I could make a career out of it, whilst also doing something useful and interesting. And certainly the traditional advice of going down finance, tax or accountancy never really appealed to me. So despite this advice, I still went to university. I, I did a maths degree. And it was here that I started to learn that maths and more specifically statistics can be used to understand interesting and relevant examples. So in my master's project, I spent time uh, developing models and analyses for determining the link um, of air pollution to the impact that has on human health. So this was looking at temporal trends of how air pollution changes over time, different points within the city, and linking that to hospital admissions of, uh, associated with breathing difficulties. And it was really here that I realized that my quantitative knowledge, my maths and my statistics can be used in order to increase understanding that's interesting to me, um, such as science and health. So having had this epiphany of what it was that I enjoyed, um, it still wasn't quite clear to me how I could make a career out of it. And I still didn't quite know what I wanted to do. So if I'm perfectly honest about it, I delayed making this decision and I went on to do more university. So I did do a PhD. Um, I'm not going to spend very much time talking about my PhD, but I'm very happy to take questions about what it's like and what it involves. But I just want to say that the work that I was doing was really much at the interface between statistics and molecular biology. And the one thing that I have come to realize that as technology advances, so does the data that we get from that technology. And what that means for us as statisticians is that the way that we approach the analysis of that data through our maths also has to change. And it was really in this development of different ways of analyzing new types of data where my PhD was focused. So having finally finished my PhD and deciding what it was that I wanted to do, I decided I wanted to be a statistician. Then I came to Rothamsted Research. So as, uh, what does it really mean to be an applied statistician? Well, to me, what it means is that I take data and I turn that into information. And equally importantly, I think I get to work on really interesting problems. So as Leanne alluded to, agricultural research is a really broad um, area and it spans the range of working in the lab, looking at how we can improve the quality of different breads through to the field of how we might look at improving the conditions of our soil and looking at uh, different types um, of problems. And what I really enjoy is that I get to collaborate and work on all of these different projects. So just to give a little bit of a flavor of what it is that I do, I want to pick up on a couple of those examples. So a really fun one is this example on insect identification. Now aphids uh, are a tiny weeny little insect um, and they pose quite a significant threat to agriculture. So they um, not only eat crops, but they also carry diseases which can infect and kill the different crops. 
so it'd be really useful to us if we could have uh, if we could develop automatic detection methods to tell us when and where there might be a pest problem. So here you see a really technical looking experiment. I've got an upside down glass jar and inside that jar, I've got free flying aphids flying around. So these aphids are about two millimeters long, so really small. But what you've also got in the middle of this jar is a sensor. And I think this sensor is incredibly cool because when an aphid flies through this, then we can record the sound of their flight based on the shadow of their, their moving through the, the sensor. So some examples of this uh, flight pattern are shown in these three graphs here. And what I've been doing is to try and develop models and algorithms that will help tell us uh, what type of aphid it was that flew through the sensor based purely on these recordings of their flight. So in this way, I see my role has been trying to take this information, this flight pattern, and boil it down into something meaningful. So what is it about the flight that distinguishes different aphids? And really, it's this idea of trying to take big amounts of information and boil it down into something simpler that's got contextual meaning. And it's common across all of the different projects I work on. So as soon as I, I, I do have time to talk about a second example, I'm going to talk about quite a different one in precision agriculture. So another project that I've been working on is to look at how we might better inform management of, of farmers' fields. So what you see in these figures are data that come directly from the combine harvester. So as a farmer is uh, harvesting their field, it's collecting data, it's telling them how much they've um, harvested at every uh, part of their field. And this has been taken over a number of different years. So what I've been doing in here is to try to collate all this information together and define different zones uh, within a field in order to better inform the management of that field. So if I can say, well, this green zone is particularly low yielding, it might tell the farmer, well, actually here is where you need to focus applying fertilizer, uh, for example. So I think um, the only thing I don't like about this figure is all the maths and the statistics are hidden behind this one single little arrow. So it's quite a, a, a fun area to work in to be able to take the information to give simple summaries, but we do hide about a lot of what we do behind um, little arrows. But anyway, it's really, as I said, it's a joy to be able to work across all of these different projects and to take the information that we see and to turn it into something that is meaningful and can be applied in practice. So I would say that that's a reasonable summary of what I do day to day, but I did want to also say that it's not always about being sat at a desk. I've been incredibly fortunate with my job to say that I truly have traveled the world. So from Canada to Australia and Africa in between, I've managed to go and attend conferences and workshops give presentations and more general outreach programs. And I think I would be lying if I said that it was all about work. There's definitely been some trips um, along the way. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say um, about my job as an applied statistician. Um, I'm happy to take questions now, or if you want to post them to me via email, then please uh, feel free to do so. Thanks, Kirsty. Um, I've got a question for you. There was one on one of those slides, there was a picture saying hidden hunger. What do you mean by hidden hunger? Uh, so this is the idea that um, malnutrition isn't only about not having enough food, but you can also have malnutrition in certain micronutrients. So in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, for example, then the soils are deficient in certain key micronutrients like zinc and iron. So you have a prevalence of anemia um, as affecting human health. So it's looking at ways in which we can define, uh, uh, find that hidden hunger uh, through soil or crops and how we can increase the amount of those key micronutrients rather than just focusing on calorific uh, value. Um, I've got a question. How much of, of your day is spent on site or in, in the lab um, helping with the science side of it? So I'm predominantly at, at my desk. So I spend time, uh, I would say 90% of my time is sat at my desk. 
uh, working away. So I definitely spend a lot of time directly collaborating with scientists, so talking with them, looking at their data and trying to understand it. I think the thing to remember is that although I might be faced with a spreadsheet of data, it's very much about talking to the scientists to understand what that means. Um, and you can't do the analysis without talking to them and understanding the problem. Can I also ask a, a question? Um, so you work in, obviously, with lots of different areas of the research that goes on at Rothamsted. Do you have a favourite bit that you really like? Oh. Or interested in? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question and as long as nobody is watching this um then i would definitely say it's more the environmental and the bigger the bigger picture um applications that i like work on the landscape scale um that i do and i think one one project that has been quite rewarding uh, about that is also we've been looking so i mentioned about improving soil and that one's been used to sort of talk with policymakers about how we might inform how policy management about that as well, which is, is a nice, nice project. Um, Kirsty, I've got a question here. How domestically people can either companion plant or plant things as fall guys, if you like, is that something that can be done on a larger scale to avoid um, any sort of pesticides, etc.? I think it's something that's an active area of research. I know it's done, uh, there's quite a lot of success again in smallholder farming in Africa about of those uh, sorts of systems. In the UK landscape, I have to say, I don't know for sure, but I think it's something that's um, being investigated. And I think, so if Helen was here, she would talk about her work on weed ecology. So that's looking at how you might create more diverse um, areas close to the edge of the field to encourage uh, beneficial insects and beneficial uh, weeds um, into those areas to increase yield. Great, thank you. Um, I don't think there's any more questions coming through, so do you want to go to your next presentation? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can, I shall um, become Helen for a few minutes. You become Helen, yes. Um, Okay, um, so unfortunately Helen can't be with us today, but Helen is an agricultural systems modeler, and so I'm going to try and describe a little bit about what that means um, to do. So Helen uh, is very much interested in looking at uh, weed ecology, weed biodiversity, and what this means is that she's interested in trying to determine why you sometimes see fields of complete uh, homogeneity, the same crop everywhere, and why sometimes you might see fields uh, more like this. But it's not only trying to understand why you might have a more diverse system, but whether or not this is actually a bad thing. So this is a picture of Helen, and like me, she would say that she spends a lot of her time uh, working at a computer. But unlike me, she definitely spends a lot of time out in the field. So Helen does a lot of field work collecting data in order to inform the models that she's interested in looking at, how she can inform that weed um, ecology. She also spends time going to conferences and giving presentations and more generally outreach programs. So I would say that Helen does um, uh, connect directly with farmers as well to engage with them about on-farm management. So what I think is quite nice is this slide very nicely summarises the route that I took to the job that I did. So I did my A-levels, went to university, got into a job. This is definitely not the route that Helen took. And what she, the approach that she took was, um, I don't want to say less systematic, but she was definitely chose to take the subjects that she enjoyed at each step of that career, rather than looking um, all the way through. And this is not a bad thing. So. Helen went to uh, university. Um, she did biology with German as her degree. So there was, uh, she didn't take maths forward, uh, even though it was something she liked at school because she liked sciences and languages. So the good thing about doing a language as part of your degree course is you get to spend a year in that country. So Helen went to Germany for a year and was there for Oktoberfest. But she also did some really interesting 
field trips. So this is her going to the Arctic Circle as well. So after doing a bachelor's degree, Helen carried on with the university and she went to do a master's degree at the University of Warwick. So this is looking at environmental bioscience. So I think this is probably where you would say that her interest in weed ecology um, really took off. But when she finished uh, university, there wasn't any jobs out there that she really wanted to do. So instead she went and took a job where she could employ those scientific skills into, in order to sort of increase that, that, uh, the skills that she's been developing at university. So she went to a research institute, which is looking at um, different ways of milling bread and the, actually creating those different types of baked goods. And she, she spent time developing methods for um, creating those baked goods. The, um, I think the absolute highlight of Helen's career and something that we should all aspire to is that she is a fully trained chocolate taster. And I think we can't argue with that as a career choice. But after a few years at Camden uh, Research, she then came to Rothamsted. So it's at Rothamsted that she went back into um, a sort of semi-education, but looking into research and so did her PhD at Rothamsted Research. So we've got a few pictures here. We've got Broadbook, the picture that Liam showed us here, the experiment that's been running for 175 years. And what Helen's been looking at doing is to estimate um, the yields within fields and how this is related to the diversity at, along hedgerows. And this uh, video that's playing at the minute is one of her outputs from her modeling work, looking at how we can simulate um, different weed traits. Um, over space. Um, and uh, the work that she's doing is incredibly diverse and I think is something that is why she, she stayed here for seven years. So I'd say she finished her PhD and carried on uh, as a career as a agricultural uh, systems modeler. Unfortunately, as I said, she can't be with us, but um, she is happy. Well, I can try and answer some questions about her work, um, but she's also got her email address and Twitter account if you want to direct questions directly to her. Thank you, Kirsty. I think you've done a great job there with um, Helen's presentation and, uh, and talking about her career. Um, how much of how much of somebody if somebody went into agricultural side of it? How, how far off the beaten track would that be? And also um, she, she chose her favorite subjects, didn't she, what she wanted to study. Um, what about yourself? How did that, what sort of GCSEs did you think about when you was doing your um, studying? Um, so for me, uh, it was science and maths that was interesting. That's what I did at GCSEs. And at A-level I did biology, chemistry and maths. And if I'm honest, I could have taken any one of those through to a university degree, but I, I took the view that maths was the one with the broadest skill set that I could apply anywhere. And I think it was during university that I really realised I could make a career specifically out of maths, rather than it being just about a second skill. Helen obviously took the, the other approach where she carried on with the science and the languages she enjoyed. And I think it's through those different subjects you pick up different skill sets and the master's degree uh, is where she learned more about the lab work and the analysis that she needs to do um, but it you, you pick it up um, as you go. If somebody went down the agricultural route they could then diversity they could diverse onto um, this onto the science side of it as well the research side of it. I, I, I would say so yes I think it's about to be honest, I think you succeed if you do what you enjoy. Um, and if you keep that, that going through, then nothing, nothing's a barrier. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kirsty and to Leanne for that brilliant session. I think what it does show is what amazing work goes on um, just locally in Hertfordshire and, and across the east of England, really, on, on this kind of plant science and how it really has really it's such important work and has implications for the whole world and helping to feed people and as you said safely for the environment too so i think it's a really um hot topic at the moment and um it was great to have you with us to talk about that 
So thanks for joining us and um, hopefully we'll see you again at another session. This, this recording will be available afterwards on our YouTube channel, so we'll um, post up details of that to you afterwards. Thanks very much.